are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Spartans Nation, welcome to Masters Day. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm tapping my hat right now. I got the Sparty Golf logo on because uh, it's not just Masters Day. It is James Pyatt Day. That's right. We're super fired up to have a Spartan in the field at Augusta this week. Uh, This is one of my favorite tournaments of the year. One of my favorite really sporting days of the year. This is right up there with Selection Sunday, the first day of the tournament for yours truly. Uh, Can we? if I can go even further into that. But yes, uh, hello everyone and goodbye to all workplace productivity today because, listen, we got golf on for like 12-ish hours. Like, yeah, oh boy, it's uh, it's looking rough in the billable hours category. But hey, please no one tell my boss that or anything like that because hey, I'm trying to have a good Thursday and I hope you are too. Thank you for starting your day with Locked on Spartans. Your team, every single day here in the Locked On Podcast Network. Yeah, even in the offseason when basketball and football aren't going on, who are we kidding? There's always stuff going on in East Lansing, and we're going to talk about some of that stuff. Like Joey Hauser had some comments today that have us uh, stroking our beard a little bit about, oh, could he? Is he coming back? And then we're going to take a listener suggestion, fly around the Big Ten, see what else is going on with all those basketball programs, and then. Last but not least, uh, I, I just got hot takes because there's a Twitter trend going on that's uh, cancel yourself with your opinions on blank. And, well, I, I was inspired and I got some hot takes about MSU basketball that in MSU circles maybe aren't too popular. But, hey, that's for all you fine people to decide. Before we get to any of that, just two quick things. Please rate, review, and subscribe, whether it's on you know your podcast platform or the YouTube channel. Hey. Please subscribe. Much appreciated. Number two, locked on Spartans at gmail.com. If you ever have any questions, comments, segment ideas. Hey, it's the off season. We're here to have some fun. If you got a fun little uh, idea, locked on Spartans at gmail.com. All right, let's get right into it. Joey Hauser, he is the third senior that has eligibility left due to the COVID year. And Gabe Brown said, no, I'm not going to use that. I'm out of here. Marcus Bingham. No, I'm not going to use that. I'm out of here. Joey Hauser, we have not heard anything from him until today, which would be Wednesday, because he spoke with Noah Manderfield of WSAW, which is a Wisconsin uh, news outlet. And uh, both of those clips that were very juicy for us Spartan fans were dropped on Twitter. Thank you to Mr. Noah Manderfield. So the first one is, quote, uh, and this is, from a conversation Joey Hauser had with his brother Sam, who is in the NBA, I believe, with the Celtics right now. So he had a brotherly conversation asking for advice whether he should try to jump up and play pro ball right now or come back to college for another year. And Joey said, quote, he thinks the best option for me would be to play college basketball for another year. Okay, so far so good. And then there was a second video clip uh, talking about Joey Hauser's communication with the MSU basketball staff, Tom Izzo, you know, of course you guys know the names, and says, quote, we haven't gotten too serious about it yet. And then goes on to say the season was still being processed and gearing down from all the hype of that exciting game. And he also mentioned that he's been in contact with the coaching staff, even though he's at home right now, as a lot, if not all, of Michigan State's basketball players are customary to go home for a week or two after the season. And he will be coming back to campus soon. He'll start having serious conversations with the coaching staff from that point on. And it's starting to get real, isn't it? And you asked me right as the final horn sounds on the season, I maybe would have said like, I think I said actually, like maybe a 10% chance, maybe a 15% chance of coming back. But those two quotes, not bad. I mean, that's that's kind of what you want to hear. And yeah, so what would be nice about it? Well, let's just talk about it from a, a Nexus and O's roster buildup standpoint, right? What's nice is that, you know, right now, like Michigan State is already returning a lot of production from last year's team. So some of the most, if not the most, in the Big Ten. I think a lot of that's going to be contingent on whether Max Christie stays or goes. But right now, hey, 
Michigan State's got a lot of experience coming back already. And and I'm not going to lie and say that, you know, I was high on Joey Hauser the whole season. Heck, if you've listened to this year podcast for the whole season or maybe even bits and parts of early on the season, I was very hard on Joey Hauser. I was. And that's because, well, was some of it in truth? I like to think a lot of it was. But you know what's even uh, truer than what I say is just his hard numbers on how great he turned around his season. The first 18 games of the year. Not that great. Not for, I mean, not forgettable. We wish we were there forgettable, but no, we remember those. And now we remember his turnaround that he had because in the last 17 games of the season, from behind the three point arc, he shot 23 of 49, which is good for 46% shooting. That's right. 17 games of the season. Was starting at that home Michigan game, Joey Hauser. 46% shooter from three, and that's not all. I think the best turnaround he had was tightening up those turnovers. Uh, He would maybe dribble a little too long. Maybe he'd be a half second too late on the passes for the first half of the season. First half of the season, the first 18 games, he had 27 turnovers. That is 1.5 turnovers per game. In the last 17 games of the season, he only had 16 turnovers, which is for .94 turnovers per game. So he cut out a half turnover per game at the end of the year. Now, was it you know perfect the second half of the year? Like, no, it was, you know, there were still games where he was a little down, but that's just college basketball at that point, right? I mean, you could say that, oh, yeah, this player has consistency issues about every player not named Oscar Shibwe from Kentucky, seemingly. That's pretty much the only guy you can rely on for a double-double every single game. Um, but, hey, listen, fact of the matter is that Joey Hauser turned this thing around, and yeah, he's absolutely an asset that you would want to have coming back. Now, what would be concerning if he came back, and listen, hey, at the end of the day, yeah, this would be great if Joey Hauser came back, but what's one thing that you'd be like, I'm a little worried about this. If MSU doesn't get another center in the transfer portal, because right now they only have two, and I don't even know how much the second one in Matty Sissoko is being trusted. I don't know if he's going to be able to log you 20 minutes a night. So, with that said, you can't run Julius Marble out there for 35 or 40 minutes every single night. So, we're going to be seeing those lineups where Joey Hauser might be task, tasked at the five for a handful of minutes per game. And, listen, like post-defense isn't necessarily his strength. It, it shouldn't be. He shouldn't be defending the post. But, if it gets down to it and Michigan State only rides into the season with one or two centers that they're comfortable with playing... We're going to get those small ball lineups that we saw a little bit here and there, even more so next season. And yeah, Joey Hauser is going to be that guy on the low block fighting for his life, trying to hold guys back from well, just getting easy layups. So that that's just one thing that that's not even a Joey Hauser issue at this point. This is a Michigan State issue. Now, with that said, let's funnel this into what does this do with scholarships and everything like that. Right now, Michigan State has three scholarships open. And this is if Joey Hauser is not here. If Joey Hauser says goodbye, okay, good luck. We have three scholarships open. And last week, Justin Thind of 24-7 Sports uh, theorized that Michigan State, no matter what, is only going to be using two scholarships in the transfer portal at most. That they'll bank the third one, use it for a future recruiting class. And if they want to do that strategy, which I agree, that checks out to me. That sounds right. If they want to use just two scholarships. Well, this doesn't log jam you at all because Joey Hauser is only going to be here for one year. This isn't like grabbing Jalen Bridges out of the transfer portal and okay, he's here for three more years. So that's a scholarship that is a three-year thing. Like, no, this is still one and done. You can still use that scholarship after he leaves for future class. So really it's, it's no skin off MSU's back to have him back as far as what they want to do with scholarships. Now for the lineup, what does this mean? It doesn't really, you know, mean anything too different from last year. I mean, for, for crying out loud, it's not like we're talking about a kid coming here from a different school. It's it's Joey Hauser. He, he's been here ever since he came here from Marquette. So your lineup would be Julius Marble, Joey Hauser, Max Christie, Tyson Walker, AJ Hogard. Of course, you could plug in different names. Like let's say, uh, or let's say Joey Hauser comes off the bench like he did a little bit this season. Julius Marble, uh, Malik Hall starting at the four. Let's say Max Christie's gone. You got Jay Nakins at the three, Tyson Walker at the two, A.J. Hogard at the one. Hey, th- that's an experienced lineup. Any way you slice it, uh, you're, you're probably getting back a guy that's 20 to 25 minutes per night 
We'll get more into it. If he wants to announce that he's coming back, if not, then yeah, we'll, we'll be a little sad and say our goodbyes to Joey Buckets. But yeah, Joey Hauser, uh, one thing before we go into this break, if you're listening, which I highly doubt you are, uh, I'm sorry for the things I, uh, I said in the start of the season. Um, wow. What a, what a turnaround this has been as I'm now begging you to come back. Please come back, Joey. Uh, we will be back guys in a hot second to talk about, well, what's going on around the, the rest of the big 10. I, I don't know. Oh wait, no, actually I do know because I looked in everything. Uh, but first we got to hear from our front, fine, fine friends at athletic greens guys. Do you, and, and gals, excuse me. Do you want better gut health? more energy, an optimized immune system. Do you hate taking pills and vitamins and just want something that tastes great? Well, Athletic Greens has the goods for you. Delicious scoop of AG1. You're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotic, and adaptogens. That's a lot of fancy sounding things uh, to help start your day right. Get your day started right. Well, it's a special blend of ingredients that supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Just one scoop and a cup of water every single day. That's it. How much easier can it be? There's no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easier, Athletic Greens is giving away one free year supply of their immune supporting vitamin D as well, and five free travel packs with your first purchase. How great is that? All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash college. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash college to take ownership over your health and pick the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And squad, before we fly around the country, man, I mean, Big Ten, just fly around the conference. Hey, just want to thank you for making Locked on Spartans your first listen every single day here on the Locked on Podcast Network. You guys are the best. Uh, You guys are just the the most supportive listener base that anyone could ever ask for. And so shout out to you guys and shout out to Andy who gave the idea for this one, which is, hey, what else is going on in the conference for basketball? Uh, Yeah, Michigan State has some guys leaving. They are hoping some guys come in. they got some guys playing the NBA limbo or had. They made their decisions by now with Marcus Bingham and Gabe Brown, but you get the point. And he wants to know what else is going on in the conference because yeah, Michigan State's not the only team here, I guess. Shoot. So let's take a look around the conference. We'll we'll break this down into some different categories. Uh, And right now, I'm not going to hit on every single team. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be disrespectful to the teams like Maryland, for example. I'm, I'm talking about the teams that are threats in the Big Ten or that will be. And we still got a good handful here. So the first category is guys departing from their teams for sure. And no one's going to feel a heavier hit than the team down in West Lafayette in the Purdue Boilermakers who forgot how they did in the tournament. I'm sure they did okay. I know they had a 15 seed uh, in the Sweet 16. So, I, yeah, they at least got the Elite Eight. I know that. Um, anyway, they're, they're losing uh, Jaden Ivey, who's going to be a, a top five, top seven pick in the NBA draft. Travion Williams. He's out of there. Uh, He announced that he'll be going to the NBA draft. And Eric Hunter and Sasha Stefanovic also out of there. So that's four guys. I mean, they lost their entire, like, guard play right there. Plus, Big Ten Sixth Man of the Year, Travion Williams. That's a big blow. Illinois, right now, all that we know is that they lost as far as big-name players. Uh, Andre Curbelo, which might actually help Illinois next year. I think that's some addition by subtraction going on right there. And then R.J. Melendez who might not be a name that you just instantly think like, oh, yeah, of course. And, uh, he was a, he was a freshman, it, it just rated just inside the top 100, but he really came along strong in the last two weeks of the season. But, hey, too little playing time, too late in the year, and he's out of there looking for greener pastures. Uh, Wisconsin, thank God they're losing Johnny Davis, and thank the heavens, thank the basketball heavens that Brad Davidson's gone. Uh, Michigan, for sure, you got Eli Brooks out. Devontae Jones is out, and then Brandon Johns is also out as well. That was just announced today. Uh, Rutgers, Geo Baker, out of there. Nebraska, Bryce McGowns, out of there. OSU, EJ Liddell, out of there. Iowa, Jordan Bohannon, the 34-year-old guy, he's out of there. Keegan Murray, out of there. And Indiana, okay, they had four guys leave, but no one really notable. So you might have thought that, like, okay, I missed some names there, like Malachi Branham out of Ohio State. Well, 
this is our second category of this topic that we're going to do is the will they stay or will they go portion. These are the biggest players in the Big Ten that have decisions to make right now. And we're going to just tool down the road to talk about the team uh, that took on Michigan State and then watched a Spartans football player dribble out the clock against them back in January. Yes, that is the Michigan Wolverines. They got three guys making big decisions here. Of course, it's Caleb Houston, Musa Diabate, and then Hunter Dickinson. Now, Hunter Dickinson, and I, I, I'm not going to be trolling with anything I say here because this is all, it's a big decision for him. And before the season, he spurned the NBA or pro hoops or whatever his plans were to have, quote, one more ride. I, I think that ride can turn into two more rides here. Uh, I, And uh, you know what? Let me just funnel into this guy right here. Illinois' Kofi Coburn, because I feel like Hunter Dickinson and Coburn, who both of them have not made decisions yet, could come back, probably make some good money in NIL, probably more than they would if they were to go professional, not get drafted, play G League, either go overseas. NIL is squarely on the table. And also, just two guys born in the wrong generation, right? I mean, as recent as, what, 12 years ago at the very least? Like, they would have been top 15 picks. You go back like 20 years, my God, 25 years, like, oh, these guys would have been, these guys would have been out of their top five picks. Are, are you kidding me? But the game's different now. The The need for big men that really can't go any further than outside of 10 feet around the rim, like, I, no real need for them in today's NBA, but college, okay, well, you can see what they do. Like Dickinson, hell, he he dropped 30 on us. I mean, uh, Coburn, like he could go off for 25 on any given night. The guy's a walking double-double. So, yeah, with NIL on the table and no real need for you in the NBA, like why not milk that cow as much as you can? So that's big decisions they have coming up. Also, for seemingly the seventh offseason in a row, this is a storyline out of Bloomington, Trace Jackson Davis kind of also in the same boat. A big man that, yeah, he's pretty good, but... Is he NBA good? I don't know. He's been there for three years, and will he come back for his fourth year? I would love to tamper and say, hey, please come up to East Lansing, transfer, and hey, we'll take care of you up here because, hey, he's a really good player. So th those are just three fascinating decisions that those guys have to make. Now, Ron Harper Jr. out of Rutgers, that's another big name that you'll know because okay, he's been playing basketball in Piscataway for 17 seasons, seemingly. And then Malachi Branham, the, the star freshman out of Ohio State, he did declare for the draft. He did say that he is going to leave the door open for college eligibility, but it seems like anywhere you look, he's a lottery pick, right? I, definitely a top 15 kid, if not top 20. Usually if a kid gets that grade, he's out of there. So that's what we'll just have to see about that. Um, and then Last but not least, the third category here I want to hit is just who could we expect to step up in these guys' roles next year? Listen, two years ago was like the year of the big man in the Big Ten, right? Like you had Coburn, you had Dickinson, you had Garza, you had, uh, oh God, I'm, of course I'm blanking on the names right here. Uh, we'll use, use Trayvon Williams in Purdue for an example. But last year, the season that just wrapped up in the Big Ten, it was the year of the year two blowups. Guys like Keegan Murray absolutely stepping up from last year. Johnny Davis exploding from last year. Jaden Ivey blowing up from last year. Who are going to be those freshmen that play as sophomores that could be on a blow-up watch? Of course, he got to go, unfortunately, to Michigan's guys, right? And that would be the Musa Diabate and then Caleb Houston. Also, hey, if Max Christie wants to come back, that's a great candidate too. Jaden Ivey, or Jaden Ivey, Jaden Akins. He is a great candidate, too, but we're here to talk about the rest of the Big Ten. Guys like Luke Goody out of Illinois, a uh, strong player. Caleb First, who got spot minutes, but there's going to be a hole left by Trayvon Williams, and I love Caleb First game. I know Michigan State was kind of somewhat close to getting his commitment, but really bummed out there. And here's another name, too, that you've heard late in the season as well, Chucky Hepburn out of Wisconsin. Uh, that's going to be a great role for him, especially with Brad Davidson not there anymore. And then here's a name that you might not know is Trey Kaufman. Purdue was in such good shape this year that they redshirted a top 50 freshman. Yes, yeah, six foot eight kid, Trey Kaufman. Uh, no 
college basketball experience because, well, like I just said three times, he was redshirted. So that could be another guy too. So yes, Purdue does lose some guys. They lose a big man in Trayvon Williams, but they got two guys in the paint that are going to be pretty solid as well. D- don't get me wrong. I think they do take a considerable step back next season, but they're not going to be a doormat or anything like that. So as a thesis for the whole segment right there, if there's a TLDR, too long, didn't read. If I could sum that up into two sentences, it's going to be the Big Ten is taking a step back next year, and Michigan State could be in a good position in a competitive maybe not great Big Ten next season. So, hey, that's uh, music to my ears. Hopefully it was for you guys as well. We'll be back in a hot second, but I, I just got to talk to you fine folks about betonline.net. Woo! Guys, betonline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. A lot of these books out there don't have our guy, James. They, they don't have him available on the boards, but betonline.net does, and they've got a ton more fun Masters props out there. They got lines that suit your eye. I, I already know that. I've got money kind of uh, piled on Tony Finau, Colin Morikawa, Abraham Answer. And uh, I could probably be talked into Cameron Smith as well because I just, I get carried away when it comes to the Masters. Anyway, find all the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championship odds, podcasts, and reviews for all the different leagues this season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting odds, esports, and scores. So head to the website today, use your mobile device, learn more about the trends and action at Bet Online, where the game starts. All right. Twitter. Com, uh, they have their trends, you know, and one trend that's flying around lately is uh, cancel yourself with your bad takes. Basically, we are stirring the pot. We are saying things that we know will upset people. And Thomas Kavanaugh is an account out there, and he tweeted out, we're canceling each other over college basketball takes today. Post your cancelable college hoops take. Uh, the only one I had that I wanted to share on Twitter was... Uh, the NCAA tournament should just stop inviting teams from the Mountain Time Zone and the uh, Pacific Time Zone. Like I, I, I'm I, and this is very ironic for a, a Big Ten conference uh, fan to say is that I, I'm done with any teams that are west of Kansas. Like I, Colorado State, please save it. You guys are good for nothing. Gonzaga, I, I'm just so out on them now. UCLA doesn't ever do it for me. Uh, their COVID run last year was completely Mickey Mouse. Anyway, uh, I, I I could just do with a Eastern time zone and Central time zone only NCAA tournament. So that was it. And then I thought, well, let's dummy this down to just Michigan State. Let's boil this down here in East Lansing. And I'm just going to give you four takes that um, are kind of somewhat maybe spicy in Michigan State country. This is all for you to decide if, if you think that uh, these are too lukewarm of takes. Uh, comment below. If you're watching on YouTube or email me at lockonspartans at gmail.com. Or if you disagree with me and you just want to yell at how stupid I am and how I'm wrong, hey, comment below. Uh, the first one is that uh, Tom Izzo just needs to start cheating. And he, st- he should have started cheating a-, a while ago. Like start paying players under the table, yada, yada, yada. And th- there's no better exhibit A of why I believe this than what happened on Monday night. Bill Self and Kansas get five level one violations back in 2019. They have the FBI records against them and all that jazz. And what's happened since 2019? Oh, that's right. Nothing except a national title. The banner is going up into the rafters at Allen Fieldhouse. And sure, people will say, oh, that that banner is going to get vacated one day. Okay, uh, probably not because Kansas seems bulletproof. And two, even if it does happen, I'd rather have a banner up in the rafters being taken down than no banner up there ever at all. Listen, I'm very against cheating, or was against it, I should say, until I realized in the last few years that, oh, nothing happens to these teams that are on the record cheating. But, oh, Sean Miller got fired from Arizona. Let's be adults here. It's because he didn't have the Wildcats in the spot that their donors and alumni wanted. Like that's, that's not, that is the FBI was just a little excuse right there. 
Go get yourself those Cliff Alexanders. Go get yourself those Brian Bones. Go get yourself those Josh Jacksons. I know it's a little too late right now, and NIL is a thing, so it makes it a little easier to pay players. But, man, Tom Izzo should have been cheating all along because, uh, yeah, hey, just ask Bill Self if he regrets anything that he's done in the last 10, 15 years down at Kansas. No shot. Number two, cancelable take about Michigan State basketball, and I know that some people agree with me here, but some people don't, is that, Everyone just needs to lay the F off of Ben Carter and his performance in the Syracuse game in 2018. Ben Carter did his job. Ben Carter played just fine, if not pretty well that night. Hey, sixth year senior, cerebral kid, great passer. He is the guy that you should have put in the middle of the 2 3 zone, and they did put him there for more than 20 minutes. I know. He didn't play that much the entire Big Ten season, but yeah, that was the guy that should have been out there because he only had two assists in the entire game. Should have been at least eight. Uh, Michigan State going eight of 37 from three-point land. He was giving them open looks. Listen, Ben Carter did his job. I'm sick of hearing that. Oh, he should have played Jaron Jackson instead. Jaron Jackson was not having a good game. Jaron Jackson was caught like a deer in headlights against that zone. He was fumbling the ball all over the place. I'm sorry. But yes, I understand that Jaron Jackson is obviously, right now, the better basketball player as he has just, what, either got the max deal or is in line to get a max deal. And quite frankly, I don't really know what Ben Carter's up to these days other than being slandered by people in the Michigan State fan base. It was not his fault that day. MSU just had to hit. One or two of those open three-point looks that Ben Carter gave him that day. And also, on that note, my other take, take number three, uh, we're going to talk about something the year after. And what can I be talking about the year after? It was a great season that ended in the Final Four. I'm just so sick of hearing about how MSU choked against Texas Tech and how that was national title number two for Izzo that got away. 2019 was not a choke job by Michigan State. And here's maybe the spicy take within this take, is that I just think Texas Tech was a better team. Texas Tech was a street-fighting team that knew how to play basketball. They play strong defense. You also have guys like Jarrett Culver on the team. You guys, like Matt Mooney going nuclear. Sometimes you just can't stop that. And also, if Michigan State beat Texas Tech, they were not going to beat Virginia the next game. And I... And barely talking about that from an X's and O's standpoint, do I think that Virginia was the better team? I do. I think if Virginia and Michigan State met up 10 times that year, Virginia wins six of those games. But also, this goes above just what happens on the court. There was divine intervention with Virginia's run in 2019. They had three games that were all miracles. What Virginia strung together in the 2019 championship defied like winning the lottery. They were just getting break after break after break. The basketball gods, the the any whatever religion that you believe in, that god was was in play for Virginia's run. So no, I don't think Michigan State was going to beat the Cavaliers. And the fourth spiciest take I have, you ready for this one? I hope you guys are sitting down for this one because I'm about to uncork one right now. Is that I think the Izzone has been pretty good. I think the Izzo's been pretty good, and I know that's like our favorite thing to like cry about. And hey, I've done it many a time. Hand up. I'm not I'm not accusing anyone of doing anything nefarious or out of line here because I've done this in the past, but I, the Izzo's been fine. Listen, it's never going to get back to the level that it was in the mid-2000s where every kid is jumping all the time and losing their, their, their GD mind. But you also got to think, those days in 2005, let's just pull that number out there. The 2005 Izzone, that was at its peak right there. Um, the kids in the Izzone right now, like, they were, like, two years old in 2005. Like, they don't remember what it was back then. Like, the, all that they remember is just last few years. And, listen, when I was a student there, that's maybe when the Izzone started to tail off a little bit. At the end of the day, though, still probably one of the top five, maybe top three hardest environments to play in, in college hoops. It's still loud. They still get up. Maybe sometimes like for the uh, Northwestern game, for example, this season, it's like, oh, they're too quiet. Like, okay, sometimes crowd energy is a two-way street. 
don't really necessarily remember a lot of things the team gave the Izone to cheer about in that game, but you have games like the Purdue game, the Michigan game. Yeah, they show up for that. So, listen, I know that it's one of our favorite things to do in the middle of every season, complain about the Izone and talk about how great it was back in the glory days, but it's been fine, if not pretty damn good lately. So, yeah, hey, that's... I say my spiciest take for last, and that is backing up the Yizone. Um, yeah, so that's 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 all that's all I got. How about that? We'll be back on tomorrow's show, guys. Uh, we're gonna have some fun. Fun day Friday. It, it'll be a hoot and a half. Uh, if you have any questions for us, hey, lockdownspartans at gmail.com. And also, before I say goodbye to you, just want to thank you very much for making Locked On Spartans your first listen every single day. Now go make your second listen, Locked On NFL Draft. It's with Ryan Tracy, former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker. They bring the NFL draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available on all platforms. Love you all, gang. Go green. Enjoy the Masters.